Where are you from? Will they say I'm Bosnian or they will come up with the but? <laughs> so you're the local. Uh, okay, so uh, now. Try to catch me howling at the moon. Tima, Tima, man. Tima. Buenos dias and hello. We have a really particular legend. When you drink the water from this pipe here, you'll come back to Sarajevo one day. So if you drink from the opposite one, you'll be stuck here like me. The third legend is probably the most dangerous one. So if you drink from both ends, this one and that one, you'll get married here. <laughs> so be careful, guys. <laughs> And behind this we have all the pigeons. We don't really know why they are there, but we suspect they know it's a food spot, so they keep coming back. Not many people know that you have a lot of different religions in this country. So my question is, what are these religions and can you live in peace? Three people groups, which are ethnically Bosniaks, Croats and Serbs, or in terms of religion. The first are Muslims, the second are Orthodox and the Catholics. This city is called the Jerusalem of Europe or the Jerusalem of the Balkans. That's why we have a mosque, this synagogue, a Catholic church and an Orthodox church in 200 meters. And you can find that only in Jerusalem and in Sarajevo. So after so many centuries of living together as one society, we don't have any problems. Mixed marriages are really common in Sarajevo. We are standing here symbolically in this formerly the Jewish part of the city. During the Holocaust, many Muslims chose to save their Jew neighbors from the Nazis. This is the best example of how normal the people in Sarajevo are. And I hope one day when you guys visit, you'll see that Sarajevo is a really vivid, open-minded and nice city. It's good to know that as well because uh, I married a Lithuanian. We mix countries. Here you can even mix religions as well. Pretty good and, and pretty open. This is very interesting. We were talking about identity. I have Latvian friends. Most of them they say, yeah, I was born in Latvia, but my parents are from Russia. How is identity here in Bosnia? If you ask right now, anybody on the street, where are you from? Will they say I'm Bosnian? Or they will come up with the but. <laughs> so you're the local. Uh, okay, so uh, now talking to Alejandro, we kind of have um, an agreement to say that the West and East of Europe still have some pretty big differences, especially with identity. In Bosnia, we already mentioned that the three big people groups, but many of the Croats and Serbs, ethnically, they would say they were born in Bosnia. They live in Bosnia, but they consider themselves um, Serbs and Croats and that their homeland is Serbia or Croatia. The reason is, I mean, complicated, but religion has a really big role here in the Balkans, uh, not just Bosnia, but all of ex-Yugoslavia, in which people who are Serbs, they adhere to the Eastern Orthodox Church, and those things are just like equalized. If you're a Serb, by default, it means you will be someone who is Orthodox, and if you're a Croat, it means you will be a Catholic. Still means that if you are Catholic, you will have really big ties to Croatia. Even if you weren't born there, even if your parents weren't born there, you you will still consider Croatia as homeland and the same thing for Serbia. That's the way it is. You have the big impact of our neighboring countries. I mean the Balkans such a complicated place probably where you have the peoples from all of the countries ex-Yugoslav living in other countries and this is what is the outcome. In simple words, because I think there's a lot of confusion about Yugoslavia. What is actually Yugoslavia? Where is Bosnia in this story? Was ever part of Soviet Union? Maybe just for people that are not from this area to clarify, and I know it's probably very obvious for you, but uh, I think it's helpful to clarify. Of course. Yugoslavia was a country that existed in most of the 20th century, had 
well, six republics, which are like states in the USA. Slovenia, Croatia, Bosnia, Serbia, Montenegro, Macedonia, and now, of course, you have the disputed area of Kosovo. Kosovo and Vojvodina, those were like autonomous territories. So those were like fully eight parts of Yugoslavia. Kosovo is disputed, depends who you ask. And Vojvodina is fully a part of Serbia, that's the north part. This country, after the Second World War, was communist, but don't confuse it, was never a part of the Soviet Union. Yugoslavia and Soviet Union had really big differences. There was almost a war and the president of Yugoslavia, Tito, was really a big critic of Stalin. When Stalin threatened Yugoslavia and Tito for not joining communist countries in Europe controlled by the Soviets, Stalin sent a jar of rice to Tito. Yugoslavia is small, you can't compare. And then Tito, the president, sent to Stalin a jar of hot peppers. How spicy we are. <laughs> so imagine, that was the only man that supposedly Stalin feared and when he died, well then Soviet Union tried to find some common language with Yugoslavia and the country persisted till the 90s when sadly war separated us and today you have the different countries different countries and some of those countries similar languages. Yes, Bosnian, Serbian, Montenegro and Croatian are one language. It's just accents of, of a same language. You can compare it to American and British English. Like you, you guys can understand each other fully. We can understand each other. It's, it's just, I mean, politics that separates us. Slovenia and Macedonian, to be fair, are a bit more different. Even in Slovenia and Macedonia, most people you can understand speak. each other our language just learn one and then find yourself in six countries and well it's enough insane the amount of things untold or unheard so it's always good to be here the next thing that people don't know here is mountains and ski they have a lot of ski resorts snow at the moment as well they held the winter olympics in the 80s this is actually a big thing you can see in all the city symbols and stuff around olympics so anyway go back to your hotel quickly change batteries pick up the drone and let's go to the mountain i think i underestimated how cold it is here in sarajevo in bosnia Minus three degrees at the moment. My nose is red. I look like a clown. So I couldn't go to the mountains tonight. They didn't advise to do so. The cable car is not working. Uh, you can probably go by taxi, but then you need to do like some hiking. And they told me it's not safe. Uh, you know, you have animals and I will go tomorrow at 7 a.m. Welcome to the heaven. Welcome to Sarajevo mountains. I was last month in the Caribbean, in Miami, in the Bahamas, now freezing again here. And this place is so cool, like people here. It was such a surprise for me because normally, at least me in Eastern Europe, from experience, sometimes you have people that, you know, are more shy or conservative, not necessarily like, you know, laughing and smiling all the time, but fine, it's part of the culture. Here it's the opposite, like people are smiling, people are so gentle, helpful, polite, willing to talk, know more about you. They speak English everywhere I go, like, wow, wow. And the city is beautiful, like Sarajevo. We're going to Mostar in two hours, so I'm super, super pumped and hyped. I am actually loving, loving Bosnia. Never, ever judge a book by its cover.